Welcome to Sports Sunday. I'm Brooke Grimsley. Electric, incredible, magical. There's just too many words to describe the Cardinals and their historic run right now. The Redbirds have not only etched their names in their franchise's record book, but also Major League Baseball's as well. After finishing their road trip with a sweep at Wrigley, they have now won 16 consecutive games. The theme of this series at Wrigley was wild, and today's finale was no different. The Cards start their late inning magic here in the top of the ninth it's three to two Redbirds and with two on Tyler O'Neill adds to it chops it back to Hoyer. He drops it and a run will score. The Cardinals take the lead four to two. But there was some controversy in the bottom of the frame. Gallegos and Schwindel at the plate with two on and one out. He pops it up. Arenado is right underneath it, but he stumbles a little bit and he drops, but he grabs it, tosses to third and then to second. It looks like it could be a double play to end the game, but it's not. An infield fly rule was called on the drop pop up, but runners were allowed to advance to second and third and Schilt is angry about that and some say rightfully so. He would be ejected after that. Luckily, though, that didn't cost the Cardinals in this one. Gallegos here strikes out half to end the game. 16 straight wins for the Redbirds, and they sweep the Cubs at Wrigley. The Cards' magic number is now down to one to clinch the second wild card. Of course, infield fly rule was the big talker after the victory, though, even though it didn't cost them the win. The umps were asked for comment after the game, but they haven't responded at this time. But Schilt gave his side of the story. You know, effectively, you know, the play at third is not a force. Um, so, you know, obviously that was that was right. And then, um, you know, we had a lot of chaos taking place and applaud the guys for staying with it. Heads up, baseball play. And uh, Eddie, you know, tagged Ortega and um, they had deemed the play dead. And, you know, at that point it's dead. Um, so it's a really, really good crew. Um, Bill and Doug are, are really good umpires and real pros. So, um, you know, it's just a matter of timing. Timing wasn't on our side. Um, you know, clearly I took exception with it. They were okay with that for the most part. Um, and, uh, you know, like you said, Geo bore down and was able to, to finish it off. Well, for more on the Cardinals historic and frankly crazy run, I'm joined by the Cardinals beat writer for our website, KMOV.com, Brendan Schaefer. Brendan, it's hard to figure out where in the world we start with all this. As I just talked to you about a minute ago, the Cardinals at the beginning of September, according to fan graphs, had less than a 3% chance to make the playoffs. And here we are. They have now exceeded expectations. I believe everybody's expectations with 16 straight wins. Where do we even begin with this? It's kind of crazy and surreal, Brooke, the way the Cardinals have taken off after really what had been kind of like five months of underperforming baseball. The Cardinals always said they had more in them. And at times this season, it was kind of difficult to believe that. But now we're obviously seeing what those guys in the clubhouse saw all along. During this ridiculous run in September, you've seen the starting pitching be stabilized. You've seen the offense explode as they did this weekend at Wrigley scoring 28 games in those three games or pardon me 28 runs in those three games on Friday and Saturday and the bullpen has been dynamic as well with Giovanni Gallegos sliding into the closer role others have picked up the slack in the middle innings the Cardinals are firing on all cylinders right now and even when they're trailing early in a game you don't have that feeling anymore that they're going to just give up and die they end up finding a way to claw back into it and win these games one way or another it's really been amazing to watch and I don't think you can count these guys out of anything at this point. Well, and also you already touched on it there, especially offensively. The Cardinals have just been on fire, especially when it comes to the long ball. 31 homers during this win streak. And then also you now have three who have exceeded that 30 home run mark on the season. Nolan Arenado, Paul Goldschmidt, and of course Tyler O'Neill, or who we like to say Tyler Broneal, who has also exceeded that mark as well. That's the most that they've had with the Cardinals threesome hitting over 30 since that MV3 back in 04. What is about those three guys that have just really exploded, especially when it comes to the long ball right now? Yeah, the power supply has been critical to this Cardinals run because you're able to score no matter what the situation is on the bases. When you get those guys in the middle of the order coming up and you need a big swing, they've been able to provide it. Tyler O'Neill, Paul Goldschmidt, these guys are having massive hits with games on the line to bring the Cardinals back 
to extend leads, to give you insurance, all kinds of home runs being hit by these guys. And we always thought, what would happen if this group of power hitters could get hot at the same time? Earlier in the season, it seemed like at least one of them would be off and on, hit and miss. But now with everybody firing on all cylinders, that middle of the Cardinals order is a gauntlet to get through for opposing pitchers. Now it's a happy flight back home here to St. Louis. The magic number right now for the Cardinals to clinch the second wild card spot is down to one. So, Brendan, what do you see feasibly as maybe the day game or anything like that that they will lock this up? You know, it only takes one more win at this point for the Cardinals to officially reach postseason play. It seems crazy that as of a couple of weeks ago, it was even a question of whether they would be able to get in. And now we're saying one win the rest of the season, which you've got one week to go, would go ahead and clinch it. The Cardinals welcome the Brewers into town on Tuesday. And the Brewers have already wrapped up the National League Central. So that's out of the question for the Cardinals. Unfortunately, it is going to be that wild card game on October 6th. However... The Cardinals would love nothing more than to show that they mean business by beating up on the Brewers, continuing that streak, and celebrating on their home field a tremendous accomplishment for all they've been through. Do you think they're ever going to stop winning? I think that's also the question here, too. Yeah, there, some people I've seen wonder, do you think it would be better for the Cardinals maybe to lose a game before the playoffs get started just to kind of get it out of their system? It's crazy. I don't think they could possibly win for the whole next week. You'd be talking about historic territory in all of Major League Baseball history at that point. And so feasibly, it would be difficult for them to run the table. However, I think what they've shown over this stretch, Brooke, is that even if that loss does come, they're going to be formidable when you get into a wild card game, regardless of whether it's the Dodgers or the Giants that they have to face. And hey, after that, they've proven the ability to string together wins. So October could be fun in St. Louis this year. And I've seen a lot of people debate about this. Who do you like their chances against better, the Dodgers or the Giants? I think that's tricky because you have to know that whichever team you face in the wild card game, you're going to end up seeing the other one potentially in an NLDS. A lot of folks that I've talked to have said, well, I would prefer to see the Cardinals face the Dodgers first because they have a deeper starting rotation with some of the names like Max Scherzer, Clayton Kershaw, Walker Bueller that they would have to face in a five-game series, whereas the Giants pitching staff isn't quite as strong in the rotation. I think the Cardinals would have a better chance against the Giants in general, whether that's the one game or in the NLDS. However, you're going to have to face the Dodgers at some point. And if it gets into a situation where the Dodgers have to continue to pitch their best up until the very end, they might not get Max Scherzer for that wild card game. And so I think that would be the best case scenario for the Cardinals. Get the Dodgers in the wild card game without having to face Scherzer, beat up on whoever they throw at you, and then take the Giants on in a five game series come thereafter. And last question for you, Brendan. Now, this is also a hot topic on Cardinals Twitter right now. Who in the world would you pick as your MVP of the season? Of course, as we know, it's been a wild one with a huge comeback and also 16 straight wins and possibly counting here. So who is your MVP? Who is the person that you see has really pushed them to this point? You know, Adam Wainwright would be on that list. The way he has stabilized the starting rotation, even back in June when the Cardinals had nobody else, the Cardinals would not be where they are right now if not for the performance back then by Adam Wainwright, but I'm going to have to go in a different direction because of the run that Paul Goldschmidt in particular has been on over the last couple of months, really since the All-Star break. And you look at his numbers since June 1st, an OPS well above 1,000, batting nearly 350 with a bunch of homers and doubles to go along with it. He has really been a catalyst. I know Tyler O'Neill has been great. Arenado offensively and defensively has been a maestro, but Paul Goldschmidt, the steady drumbeat for this team, I think I'd have to go in his direction if I'm talking Cardinals MVP. All right. Well, thank you so much, Brendan, for joining us. And, of course, we're going to have to talk to you here soon as we get ready for October. Thanks, Brooke. Always enjoy it. We'll still head on Sports Sunday. Cards Hall of Famer Bob Gibson has a World Series game for the ages. That's next on The Flashback.